start uh, suppose sunai there yeah uh, audio is fine uh, video is fine no lag right you guys can hear everything so uh any questions that you have so this is a live session so any questions that you have uh, specifically related to you know android interview questions anybody who is going to give android interviews uh, in the next few days or uh, you know planning for preparing for android interviews uh, if you have any questions in your mind feel free to write them down in the chat i would love to take them up i have some uh, of you know the content that i want to obviously share with you initially and then i would uh, pick up the uh chip the message on the chat and i will uh cover those uh, topics as well right uh so uh i think i'm already getting uh some you know uh questions uh coming on the chat but uh let's just start with discussing something uh you know uh is that how do android interviews uh get conducted so uh you know for for people who don't know just uh for some background uh you know after uh you know uh running coding blocks full time for three years i had then spent a year at zomato uh, where i uh, led uh, for 6 months what was called the android platform team so the platform team uh, works on stability reliability speed of the app reducing the size of the app uh, you know uh, reducing the crash rate of the app so uh, the app was used by you know 2 uh, 3 million people every day and downloads 100 million total downloads uh, zomato app if you see on the play store so uh, making sure that you know 99.99% of the people don't have crashes and also that's something that i uh, worked on hired people in the team as well and then uh, for the next half of the year i uh, was actually uh, leading the uh, what was called the consumer app team so basically the main zomato app that everybody uses to order food and all uh, so uh, the android uh, team i was leading uh, in charge of making the app releases and uh, you know uh, we we revamped the entire app during that time uh, you know you might have seen android uh, zomato is very famous for revamping their entire app almost uh, every year so i did that now uh, i work at uh, target so target is uh, also has another very big android app and uh, it is uh, it is one of the biggest retailers in the us it's uh, like amazon walmart like that there's target and target has very big big supermarket kind of stores kind of like you know you have big bazaar and something in india and uh, their android app is also again used by uh, almost as many people as zomato there uh, you know uh, the the volume of people using there similar it's a bigger team here actually because uh, it has even more features uh, the uh, app here and there is uh, one part of the team which is based out of india and i am the lead engineer in that team um so uh, this has given me obviously the chance to interview a lot of android uh, developers in uh, the past few years uh, i think uh, Uh, like just screening uh, at a resume level i have done probably 500 interviews probably 200 plus uh, i have done so uh, there is uh, obviously the difference in uh, i i just uh, start with the content is that you know uh, when we are hiring generally there is you know you are hiring for sd1 level people or sd2 level people uh, or sd3 level people uh, you know uh, so this is basically kind of you know uh zero to two years kind of experience out of college uh that kind of people so it's called either associate developer junior developer or just developer or engineer that's the kind of role that sd uh one uh engineers have okay uh so in in terms of like at zomato there was roles like sd one two three and then staff engineer and principal engineer like that um at target we have got engineer and then senior engineer and then lead engineer and so on and you know many companies like you know uh, of the bigger fan kind of companies you have l4 l5 l6 those kind of levels right so uh, just to give you a perspective of you know what level of interview are giving uh, based on that what uh, level of interview questions would be coming up uh, so uh, to just uh, lay down that expectation so it's kind of like you know uh, uh, 2 to uh, i guess uh, what uh, would be somewhere around 2 uh, to 5 years kind of experience Uh, generally like sd2 kind of level uh, people are joining in at sd3 level could be like there's a bit of overlap obviously so uh, you know uh, 4 to 8 years kind of people uh, they are generally joining in at sd3 kind of level so uh, beyond that uh, i myself am not so experienced so i haven't obviously taken interviews of people uh, join i i i am a lead engineer but i haven't taken interviews of people who are joining in at a level higher than that uh, but then obviously i think we don't have that kind of an audience here as well uh, and uh, there are uh, very few people actually in the industry who have more than 8 years of experience on android nobody would have they would have experienced something else plus android android itself is just 10 years old i have been working on android for uh, ever since it came out uh, almost 10 years so anyway uh, so you know uh, 
setting the baseline here um, what are the things that you know people would be expecting from you for this different different levels so uh, uh, one of the base parameters for example was not there a little while back but it is now there is you know some you need to know kotlin okay so you know, i think two years back people who knew java they would be like we'll join we'll learn kotlin on the job if our project uses kotlin that kind of an approach these days Kotlin uh, kind of become uh, very important. Uh, you know, the uh, basic uh, stuff like, you know, Jetpack libraries, like, you know, uh, most of the Android support library, uh, Android navigation, those kind of libraries that uh, Google has created, their Jetpack family of libraries. So these are the kind of hygienic things. So whatever SD, one, two, three, whatever level, these kind of things obviously are expected, okay. Um, when you uh, talk about SD2 kind of level, uh, so here what things start becoming more important is understanding, you know, the architecture. So MVVM uh, versus MVP, uh, what are the differences in that? Which one should you use? Uh, how testing is done, uh, right? Uh, these things become a little more important. And then uh, for SD3 uh, kind of level of people, obviously the to these things included. And then for SD3, there is even more in-depth questions on, uh, you know, uh, uh, dependency injection, which is uh, Dagger, Coin, there are some libraries around that, uh, using Rx Java or uh, using coroutines, uh, right? And uh, there are other topics, we will uh, go and discuss about that. And uh, the depth of the other things as well, like understanding of architecture, testing, those kind of things also increase as uh, we go ahead. So this is the kind of basic layouts of what kind of uh, topics people are going to be asking questions on that uh, is how the framework is laid out okay now so to start with uh, good uh, so i will just uh, start with uh, how does the process works okay so let's start with the process and this is very important so so process obviously starts with from the company end we prepare a JD and we, you know, put it out. Now the JD would very clearly uh, mention what level of skills that we are looking for. Uh, do we want somebody who has just the basic level of idea to create an app and put it on the Play Store? Or we are looking for somebody who has worked in a production app for at least two, three years. So that gives you a basic differentiation between if it's an SD1 opening or SD2 kind of opening. Okay, so SD1 and 2, these are not generic terms different companies would have different kind of terms but you know mentally keep a model that you know whether it's a junior engineer role or it's a senior engineer role like that okay so uh, that uh, getting the uh, jd you would get to know that and then uh, you know from there uh, there would be the uh, the resume shortlisting that happens at that point now I i'll just uh, tell you what kind of things i want to look inside a resume uh, when i see a resume for an android development role uh, but before uh, you know uh, going ahead uh, so uh, I'll, I'll tell about that after resume what usually comes is so if your resume is selected then you mostly uh, for companies where it's an android specific role you would get a take-home assignment okay uh, after the take-home assignment uh, the uh, process would generally be uh, there would be you know uh, usually there would be round one uh, of the interview so in the round one of the interview mostly you know discussion about this happens uh, plus concepts and then if there is a round two so round two would uh, contain you know uh, concepts plus uh, programming so that's the general format i have seen i have uh, helped hire uh, Android engineers for other companies as well. Uh, you know, uh, some of, uh, you know, startups for my friends uh, and as a hiring consultant, I work. So that's generally the process. You you, uh, you look at the uh, JD, you submit your resume, your resume gets shortlisted. Uh, based on resume getting shortlisted, you get a take-home assignment. You submit the take-home assignment and uh, if the assignment is well done, then you get the first round. In the first round, uh, you would be sitting together with some Android engineer and they would be discussing the uh, take home assignment that you have done and they would discuss why you have done certain things like you know uh, why are you using mvvm here why are you not using mvp here something like that or why have you not written tests because you did not have time to write the test or because you did not think that this particular part of the app needed tests to be written uh, questions like that so mostly it will be 
uh, you would be challenged upon your choices that you have made while making that app. That is generally what your first round is in most companies. Okay. Uh, and then uh, some conceptual questions will also come uh, based on what they're, you know, asking. So, for example, uh, if, you know, uh, you have used Rx Java, just for example, to do uh, network calls inside the uh, as a take home assignment that you've done. And then they might ask, okay, why have you used RX Java? And you know, why have you not used, uh, you know, uh, something like coroutines or the other way around, maybe you have used coroutines and they're asking why have you used coroutines and why are you not using RX Java? Okay. So that uh, level of discussion is what happens in the uh, first round. And uh, they, if you clear that, then there's a second round. Second round, usually uh, there is less discussion about the project that you've already submitted because that has already happened in the first round. So second round, again, there's going to be Android specific questions and some, uh, you know, language in depth questions will also start appearing in the second round. Uh, so people would ask you about in depth about Kotlin, uh, you know, uh, how to find out memory leaks inside an app. Uh, you know, if your activity is opening slowly, how would you investigate that? These kind of questions start coming and uh, deep conceptual questions about Android. So by, you know, uh, deep con conceptual questions, it means, you know, uh, core Android, there are, you know, a lot of stuff like, you know, activity, the life cycle of activity, uh, how to prevent, uh, you know, uh, data getting destroyed when the phone screen is rotating. These are, these are more on the basic level and the last level, there are uh, more stuff. So these kind of things start getting asked. So that uh, is what happens in the, you know, second round. Uh, third round, it depends on company to company. Some companies do have a third round where then you usually uh, have an interview with uh, somebody like, you know, your... Uh, in director of engineering or principal engineer if there is somebody like that you know the team lead of android or something like that uh, in smaller companies it's called cto round okay so there, there is a tech culture kind of round that happens in some places some places it might not happen depending on how urgent the hiring is so for example sometimes when we have a uh, lot of openings and we are not getting a lot of candidates we don't do round three we do round one round two it's good uh, people are getting hired after that okay you might have an hr round or something like that that's kind of general i'm not going to spend time based on that because this video is about android interview so what hr round people ask you can see there are a bunch of other videos on youtube you can find out about that right um let me quickly look at the uh, messages in the chat once and then i will uh, come back and talk to you about uh, what levels what kind of questions i generally ask okay so A okay. lot of people are asking about uh, whether freshers are hired or not. So uh, 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 listen to me. Uh, now uh, uh, let me just uh, kind of uh, tell you about the kind of companies also, uh, right? Uh, so so there are some companies, obviously, like the uh, very well-known big-size companies, like you know there is you know uh, Google and you know Amazon uh, and uh, Microsoft. Uh, then uh, you know um, not even Microsoft I would not say Microsoft has kind of role specific hiring uh, but but uh, you know uh, we will say there is Samsung uh, Adobe uh, right so uh, these uh, kind of companies who have a very big headcount uh, the, the, the number of people who are employed is very large uh, they're the fresher hiring SD1 level hiring so these kind of companies at SD1 level hiring uh, they don't check whether you know, you know, uh, you know, Android or, you know, Node.js, whatever, these kind of things don't matter to them. They are hiring for general SD1. They, they will hire you based on your, you know, programming fundamentals. Uh, they might ask you a little bit of system design to get an understanding of whether you understand how the web works, how, how APIs work, these kind of things they might ask, but they will mostly ask about, uh, your basic data structures, algorithms. Some companies have, say, when Google asks a lot about graphs and all. Uh, right. Uh, other companies like, you know, Facebook asks about array and string manipulation more. And again, data structures algorithms, what which company asks, you will again find bunch of uh, videos uh, and you will find articles on Geeks for Geeks and also I'm not going to waste time on that. But there are companies, uh, for example, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the product based startups that exist in India. So, for example, let's say Zomato. Okay something that I can tell you about. But then similarly, Zomato's competitor. So Swiggy is there, right? Uh, Urban Clap is there, Flipkart is there, uh, or, you know, Paytm is there, or PhonePay is there, right? Uh, Dream11, uh, Unacademy, uh, you know, uh, Doubtnut, the Doubtnut is a company where I've helped hire people. So. These kind of companies, they, they hire for specific roles. They hire for 
they will hire for backend engineer they will hire for front end engineer they will hire for android engineer they will hire for specific roles so here even at the you know basic level also they they do have role specific hiring uh, when they come to campus placements sometimes they do hire you know generic uh, sd kind of roles they hire but mostly these companies they are hiring for specific roles so here if you go to their websites and you know you see that you know what kind of openings and all they have you will see that okay there is a specific you know node js developer django developer android developer react developer this kind of specific technology based roles are there so these companies are going to be role specific hiring and uh, uh, at target also we do role specific we have android engineer opening so senior android engineer we are in fact hiring at target right now if you uh, go up at careers.target.com you'll find the india team we are hiring uh, right so uh, uh, these uh, companies where it is role specific where the where the job description says not software engineer but it says act android engineer so i'm talking about these companies if it's just basic software engineer role then hardly they will ask about android related things uh, in those uh, interviews right so different companies have a different approach not everybody uh, hires just specifically for android so company name people are saying dunzo and all of that so you got an idea right you know like dunzo will fall into this kind of a bracket it will not fall into this bracket uh, it's very easy for you to understand right uh, what which kind of company falls into which bracket and you can look at the careers page you will see whether they have technology specific roles or they do not have technology specific roles okay uh, so let me uh, show you what uh, scope of take home assignment generally is given to you okay couple of take home assignments i recently did uh, so i will talk uh, to you about that as well so um uh, let me just uh, remove the ipad screen and bring my screen here up. yeah so uh, this is an app that I uh, did, uh, you know, uh, recently where, uh, you know, uh, we were making a blogging app. So uh, this contains basically, you know, uh, the, the uh, and a mobile app version of uh, this site, basically, where you have got uh, your articles and you can write articles and global feed. Uh, is there and you can go inside an article and you can write some comments uh, we, we have a you know YouTube playlist already I think uh, so there's this real world Android medium clone I have uh, made a video series on uh, this project actually how I made it so you find it out there uh, Right. Um, so uh, that is uh, typically the kind of uh, projects that are given. So another example I'll give you. So this is something like, you know, uh, there is an API called GitHub trending now dot uh, sh. So here if you go, there's the uh, latest trending uh, languages and repositories on GitHub. So it was basically an app that uh, shows uh, the, uh, you know, the trending list. Uh, the UI has uh, two activities, a trending list and, uh, you know, uh, it fetches uh, the data. I think uh, what I had done here was. Yeah, so it fetches the top languages, the top repositories, and the top developers from GitHub shows them in a screen. Okay. Very simple scope. Uh, this was there. Then uh, this is something that uh, you know I gave for another company, and uh, they asked me to create this app where uh, I fetch the data from. I, I in uh, in fact this one I would make a YouTube series on this actually. So this company does not use this uh, project for hiring anymore. I confirmed with them, so I I can make a video series about how to make an app. It's a nice project idea. So taking data from Imgur, uh, basically you know uh, you know there's a site called Imgur where you get uh, photos. So making an Instagram clone using the Imgur API. So take photos from uh, Imgur and make an Instagram. So explore page will contain all these uh, photos here. And then in the top of the stories, basically you can use hashtags. So there are hashtags on Instagram. So top hashtags and you put them in stories, something like that. Uh, okay. So that's the uh, kind of scope of the project. Uh, I think uh, you're able to understand what is the scope of the project that people are going to give you. So it's going to be three to four API calls right max three to four api calls okay so finding all the photos finding all the hashtags finding the maybe in the photos you're getting an array of photos and inside each photo comments three api calls right uh, the github one trending languages trending repositories trending developers three api calls uh, this uh, medium clone one so there are com articles comments users three api calls it will be usually like three to four api calls uh, right 
three to four screens on your app corresponding to those API calls, show the articles, then click on one article, so expanded view of that article, show that. Okay, uh, that would basically be your, uh, and it would be a very simple UI to make. They won't ask you to make some, you know, very cred app kind of animation or something like that. It will be like just simple, get that data down and show it in a nice way on your screen. Uh, sometimes you might be given mockups in the document that tells you how to make that project. Uh, that's what your take home assignment is uh, gonna be like. Th that's the scope of the take home assignment. Uh, what are they gonna look at inside the take home assignment? So let's talk about that, okay. So, Let's let's get there. Uh, any any questions? If anybody has, uh, feel free to ask uh, about take home assignment part, and I will be explaining to you in a take home assignment part what they're going to be expecting. Uh, so so for example, uh, this is the app that I had made. Uh, now, uh, one thing that uh, you know is very important is uh, like for example here in the app you would be seeing. Uh, I have made a separate library module uh, where the API calls are there. Okay, uh, so this. Uh, is a little more advanced level you can say uh, I have made it using uh, dependency injection so it contains uh, you know dagger is getting used here so if, if uh, you guys know about dagger then uh, that's great if somebody does not know dagger don't worry uh, it's not necessary that you have to use dagger in your project to get selected for nander interview role uh, there are other dependency injection as well if you don't know dependency injection at all then you're probably not uh, qualified enough to apply for sd2 level kind of role uh, right sd1 you can apply for uh, without di knowledge sd2 you would not be able to apply for right uh, so this uh, you know uh, in both these projects though so this is the github trending uh, one as well so as you can see i've made two separate uh, modules one is the app where the ui part is working and this is basically my uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, lib part where i'm doing the api calls so here there is the you know uh, api calls are written here the models for that api calls uh, those things are written here you would be using something like moshi or json or jackson or something like that and uh, then there are tests as well so uh, there are tests now uh, this is where i'm testing that you know uh, it can fetch the uh, repository data and uh, all everything so this is the uh, real test and i think there is a mock test so that's the real test which actually makes the api calls and test this is the mock test which uh, fetches data from assets so i have created some you know sample json file so because your tests uh, if it is running on the CI, maybe the CI is running an environment where internet access is not there, it might not be able to connect and actually make the real API call. So you can keep a fake API because testing the API is not uh, testing your app. Your app should, uh, the test for your app should not fail if the internet is somehow not working or something like that. So you can keep like a fake copy of your API responses inside your app and uh, run the test for that. So your tests uh, and everything for the app uh, would be working. So uh, I can make my api and that my data fetching and all things work so the test for that i can write here so uh, but this uh, project does not use as you can see uh, dagger or coin or dependency injection it's a more simpler scope pro project that i had done this one uh, uses that so it has got uh, you know in in for example if i look at uh, my uh, view model uh, so not in the view model i think it will be there inside at least my activities and all so here uh, i'm you know getting the api via inject so inject is dependent injection i'll talk about that so uh, this is more of a kind of project that you would build if you are applying for sd2 kind of level uh, this is more of a kind of project that you would build if you are uh, applying for a sd1 kind of level by the way i will open source these projects rather these are private let me do that actually right now uh, so i will send the links on the chat as well uh, so i made them up a while back i would uh, make this public and i'll just drop the links in the chat uh, and I'll uh, drop it in the, you know, the co comments of the uh, uh, video as well. Okay. So, so this is the GitHub trending repository one. Okay. Uh, then uh, let me do the other one. This is the Imgur app, right? So uh, I'll, I'll make this public as well. So you can see like the scope of uh, the project that uh, we usually make for 
SD. So the, the M good one is more SD two kind of level. You should make projects like this for SD one kind of level. The GitHub trending one and the conduit one is uh, perfectly fine. So uh, this project that I'm showing uh, that, that I made the video series on, right? Uh, th there is this entire video series I was just uh, telling you guys about. So uh, if you look real world uh, Android uh, coding blocks, if you just search, you know, you will find uh, these. Uh, so I don't know, a lot of parts were there, you know, twelve parts or something. Uh, so. We just find out part one actually uh, it should be there in a playlist as well on our channel um, so i think it's part of this uh, course playlist as well so you will find it there uh, you can just search uh, on our channel and you'll find this so that's also kind of sd1 kind of level the kind of project that i have built uh, there in that uh, series uh, it does not use dependency injection it does not use uh, rx java or something it uses very basic Coroutine based uh, network calls, uh, not a very uh, deep dive into uh, concurrency and all that stuff. Okay, uh, let me open source this and then I will continue speaking about the questions that people ask after submitting of the uh, projects. Oh, it was supposed to be public. So there you go. Uh, I have, you know, uh, made both of these public. You can go and uh, check that out as well. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, now, uh, any questions that you have, I would love to take them up on the chat for uh, two, three minutes, and then I will resume uh, to what kind of questions people are uh, asking. Uh, we'll come back there. Okay. So. Uh, there's one question about whether live Android coding is done during an interview or not. Uh, that is 99.99% of the cases it is no. Okay. So after your project, they might ask you to open that project up on your Android studio and explain things inside it. But nobody would ask you during the interview to actually code things. Uh, right. Uh, when physical interviews hote the, Zoom while interviews are very exhausting and nobody was going to make you live code things. Or uh, ka internet connection and laptop ka resources jis ka hota hai. Ek Zoom call chalte hai, if you try to build your Android project, kai log ka crash kar jayega, toh, malab, nobody takes that risk. Okay? And, and it's just too much hassle. So don't worry about that. Nobody will ask you to live code uh, an Android project during the interview itself. Uh, but they might ask you to just open the project up and you know uh, show things and all of that stuff that can uh, happen okay uh, so that's uh, answering that question any other questions that you have uh... okay uh, let me uh, just uh, cover the questions that i had in my mind itself and 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 we will uh, move ahead so uh, so just uh, coming back to my iPad, uh, just a moment. Let me get here. Yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, what kind of questions uh, will get asked? So the very first thing obviously is uh, the activity life cycle. And it's it's extremely basic. It's like mention the activity life cycle, but still, you know, uh, most of my experience on asking people is many people answer very wrong things in the activity life cycle itself. Okay, so what is the activity life cycle uh, and what kind of questions, uh, you know, uh, are get asked in the activity life cycle. So uh, le let's talk about that. So let me just go to my display again. Uh, so both famous topic here, okay? Android activity life cycle. And uh, there is also the fragment life cycle, okay? So these two things are extremely important to understand and uh, more than anything else, you should have a practical understanding of it. Not just, you know, this diagram comes to mind, so many people just know this diagram, they actually don't understand what it is important. So I will tell you that thing. So what is it? Uh, if you look at this diagram, what it says is that uh, obviously, uh, where which kind of code is supposed to be written, uh, that is something people ask questions on they might ask you ki acha hum view model ko initialize kahan pe karenge on create mein kare on start mein kare on resume mein kare right uh, let's say there is some observer which is observing the text that somebody has written so let's say there is a text field okay to uh, kuch is tarah se hai uh, coming back to my uh, yeah 
सो लेट्स से ऐसा कुछ है कि यू नो मेरे स्क्रीन पे यहाँ एक टेक्स्ट फील्ड है जिसके अंदर मैं अपना नाम लिख सकता हूँ अर्नव करके तो नीचे ना लाइव लिखा आता है हेलो अर्नव तो तुमने यहाँ पे एक टेक्स्ट वॉचर लगा रखा है ठीक है यू हैव पूरा टेक्स्ट वॉचर ऑन दैट टॉप फील्ड एंड एज एज अ लेटर एवरी लेटर इज टाइप इफ आई स्टार्ट टाइपिंग जी हियर ऑटोमेटिकली यहाँ जी विल अपियर हियर ओके सो दिस अ लाइव टेक्स्ट वॉचर हियर नाउ वेर वुड यू सेटअप द टेक्स्ट वॉचर so these kind of questions will get asked so generally you write a lot of your code inside on create but uh, for something like the text watcher you would ideally do it inside on resume and you would remove the text watcher inside on pause because your activity is uh, not in the foreground when uh, somebody is working on some other app so they go to the other app then they come back to your app during this time your watcher should not be enabled because if your watcher is enabled then first of all it can lead to memory leaks and secondly what is the point of that watcher being enabled okay um, let's say you have another watcher is like you know uh, depending on the uh, uh, accelerometer of your phone uh, some color changes happen or depending on the uh, let's say uh, the light sensor of your phone how much light is there some color change happening so there is say some true tone shifting that's happening you know true tone these kind of things happen in uh, laptops and mobile these days is if the light is yellowish then your phone screen becomes a little yellowish if the light is bluish then your phone screen becomes bluish so that uh, it appears perfectly white to your eyes right if you have written a code like that so where would you initialize that you would initialize that inside on resume and you would deinitialize that inside on pause you would not keep it running across create and destroy you would keep it running only between resume and pause so these kind of things get asked about the activity life cycle okay and what kind of uh, things that you need to clean up uh, at on pause what kind of things you need to clean up at on stop what kind of things you need to clean up at on destroy again these kind of things you know you can go to the net you can uh, look up a lot of things theoretically but i would honestly say that the best way to understand this is going to be making some apps and then play with the activity life cycle so uh, there is something called you know uh, don't kill activities uh, so uh, don't keep activities sorry so uh just search for don't give activities android you would find a lot of articles which explain to you that uh, what this developer option allows you to do what it generally does is that when you go from one activity to another it makes sure that the previous activity gets destroyed so then you go back the previous activity thing it's not in the memory anymore so it has gone through the entire life cycle so making sure that your activity works fine even if you have don't keep activities enabled on your phone right so these kind of things you should uh, do and when you do that you will automatically learn the things you will learn the things which are needed to answer the activity life cycle related questions then there are uh, other things like you know uh, questions that get asked is you know does on destroy uh, get called all the time again people who read at it theoretically might or might not have a correct understanding of it but uh, on destroy does not get always called sometimes the app process can get killed Uh, without on destroy uh, getting called so if there is some code written inside on destroy there is no guarantee that it will run when the activity is stopping okay uh, when does on restart get called a question that i ask and i feel a lot of people get it wrong is that when does on restart get called okay uh, so when there is a stop to start cycle happening then on restart gets called now uh, what happens is that a uh, uh, lot of times uh, the app uh, might have gotten killed without getting the on destroy getting run how do you get to know that so that's what if it has gone through the restart cycle then you know that it was not destroyed but if it has not gone through the restart cycle then you know it has been destroyed and it's a new instance of the activity that has uh, opened up right now so that is uh, something about the activity life cycle that gets uh, asked a lot okay uh, then obviously there is the fragment life cycle so fragment life cycle is again a little more complex so uh, there is actually uh, uh, the fragment has a on create function uh, okay uh, i don't know if uh, you seen so there is a create function there is a on create view inside which you are supposed to create the view of the fragment you have to do the you know in, uh, in use the inflator and inflate the layout uh, after that there is a on view created Uh, then there is a on view state restored is also there so which happens when uh, the fragment is detached and reattached to your screen okay then there is a start and then there is a resume so these are uh, the view life cycle is the fragment callbacks uh, understanding which things map to which thing so if a fragment is inside an activity uh, when the activity is destroyed will the fragment also be destroyed or will it not be destroyed uh, understanding these things so they get more important 
the activity life cycle for SD1 level is very, very important. Uh, the fragment life cycle, couple of mistakes if you do, that is fine at an SD1 level. SD2 level, it's important that you understand the fragment life cycle also very well. Uh, because when you're dealing with complex apps, you have a fragment, you have multiple fragments inside one activity. They keep getting recycled. Understanding the backstack manager of the fragment. Okay, so backstack manager means when you have one fragment inside the activity, then you put another fragment on top of it, then you put another fragment on top of it, you press the back button, what happens? Uh, sometimes if you don't set a background for your fragment, if the fragment has a transparent background, then if you don't uh, do add. So uh, this is something that a lot of people, you know, uh, kind of, uh, fuck up in their code is that uh, they they do add one fragment on top of another fragment. What happens is through the top fragment you are able to see through the lower fragment. That's happening because you have not put a uh, background color. You you have not set a uh, background to the fragment. Okay. Now instead of setting the background to the fragment, what they do is uh, they change the add method to a replace method. Now, if you change the add method to the replace method, then your back button will stop working. Your back button will not go back to the previous fragment. Okay. Uh, so uh, these kind of things, uh, whether people understand really the backstack navigation, how that works, uh, the fragment add, fragment replace, fragment transactions, how they work. Uh, these things are also very important about the life cycle. So that's kind of very basic stuff that gets asked. Uh, that is one thing. The, the next thing that gets asked obviously is about uh, the architecture. Uh, so architecture is again, uh, you know, MVP, MVVM, MVC, uh, these kind of things. Now, essentially what that means is, uh, I'll uh, uh, talk about, I don't know if I can share the screen or something maybe. Um, so, uh, so do something uh, like this, I will, uh, okay. Let, let's just talk about the MV star architecture and then I will give you this example. Okay. Um, uh, single app architecture Mehul or did you mean single activity architecture? I think you meant single activity architecture. Uh, so whether or not using single activity architecture that depends. Uh, multi-module app, uh, obviously I think Pulkit has answered that uh, part for you already. Um, I don't know if... Uh, so uh, Pratham you have asked whether somebody will go deep in Dagger for SD1 if you have used inside the project. So if you have used, they will ask questions but not really really deep. Uh, so you know uh, there is uh, like some seriously deep stuff on Dagger like how uh, singleton thread management inside dagger works or you know how to use uh, private scoping for uh, modules inside dagger so those things obviously will not get asked but it will they will ask you at least you know why are you using dagger what is the purpose of di uh, you know theoretical understanding of di whether you have or not that uh, will get asked at an sd1 level if you are using dagger okay uh, if you know how to use dagger definitely use it it's not like don't you uh, if the project is too simple then don't use it Right. So I don't use it like when I, I also give a lot of Android interviews just to stay sharp, just to stay uh, aware of the industry trends, not necessarily just to get a new job, but I keep giving interviews. The thing is that uh, if the scope of the project is too small, then don't over engineer it. Uh, what happens when you over engineer it is you want to show that, you know, Mereko dagger bhi aata hai, Mereko arik java bhi aata hai, Mereko multi-module karna bhi aata hai, so cheeze aati hai. And when you try to show that, you, you make some mistakes and then people are able to use the you know extra code that you have written to you know tighten your screws don't do that if the project scope is simple keep it simple obviously don't write your code in such a way that modifying it later is not go gonna be a problem right so keep it adaptable keep it modifiable right uh, but but don't over engineer it don't write it in such a way that you know it is written like the code is written like something of 10x the scope of the problem statement that you have been given okay Uh, by the way, Android interview questions, there is one repo, uh, it's a good repo by uh, a very good friend of mine, Amit uh, Shekhar. So he runs uh, MindDocs uh, and he has made a repo called uh, Android interview questions. This should be one, uh, the MindDocs one. So this is also a good, good uh, you know, place to go and uh, look at Android interview questions. This is uh, very well maintained uh, as well. Uh, in fact, uh, if you want to contribute uh, questions to it as well. So 
questions related to core android questions related to libraries architecture design problem those kind of things are there so like i was saying uh, so uh, here you can actually find a good list of uh, places from where you can uh, learn what is mvp what is mvvm what is mvc uh, you know uh, understand mvi these kind of things so architecture is something that gets asked just after the activity life cycle and fragment life cycle life cycle part next thing uh, the the architecture gets asked so i'll i'll uh, talk about architecture oh by the way my screen is not getting shared i'm sorry uh, yep so this is the repository uh, if you just search for you know uh, android interview questions you will find mindocs open source android interview questions and this is the repository it's a, it's a very famous repository has 6000 stars you should go and bookmark this repository as well uh, like i was saying and there is core android questions and then questions on android libraries question on android architecture design problem uh, those kind of things are there cool so this is a, this is, a, this is a definitely good place to uh, check out what kind of android interview questions come uh, they have answers also along with that and if possible you can contribute your own questions and answers to it would be great it would be it's a nice open source uh, repository everybody should contribute and maintain it i would i believe uh people who ask android interview questions they often go and look at this repository and find out questions to ask as well like it happens right you know with ds algo questions people go to gfg not just to look at answers but uh, interview people who are taking interviews they they uh, go to gfg to uh, find out questions as well so right uh, it's kind of like that um, now talking about uh, what this uh, mv star stuff is right so you know so as architecture goes so there is obviously you would find most architectures are written in form of m v and something okay so this something can be controller it can be presenter it can be interactor it can be view model okay but tomorrow somebody can come up with something else as well now what it essentially means is that your app would generally uh, be something like this that what you see on your screen right what you see on your screen is let's say it's a twitter kind of app so you know people's tweets their photo their title and then the content of the tweet and then there is the like button and then there is the whatever you know uh, something something button like that and there are multiple tweets like this so every tweet has a avatar a username and then the text of the tweet and then there are some buttons below it like that okay this would be coming from an api right so there would be some api uh, you make a get request to uh, slash tweets and in response what you will get is you will get an array this array will contain objects each object will contain uh, these these things the title body description avatar all that stuff so this has to be shown on the screen here this has to be shown on the screen here that's essentially what you're doing when you're making an app right so where is the architecture that comes into the picture in this case right so let's talk about that so what you generally do is you will write uh, some code uh, which is to fetch this data you will create something like you know twitter api kind of a class okay now twitter api class is actually going to make these api calls and fetch that data okay uh, the data that would be fetched uh, these maybe you have a tweet.java class or tweet.kt class which is a data class which represents each tweet okay uh, this array is basically uh, an array of tweets okay so this is the response class and all that so these things are basically called your model okay so these things are called your model so model represents the uh, data structures and the code which deals with the data of your uh, project okay and uh, you would have obviously uh, something like you know uh, home dot uh, home activity dot kt inside that you might have a feed fragment dot kt so these things are gonna be your view okay so the layer of business logic it's called which will deal with what so as soon as we click on the like button, some API call needs to go, you know, there would be some API call post request will be made to slash tweet slash some tweet ID and uh, slash like. So there's how a like request is made. Okay. So when you, uh, you know, try to re reply to a particular tweet, in that case, another 
post request is made to slash tweet slash uh, tweet id slash replies okay so whenever this button is clicked this api call is supposed to be done when this api call is supposed to be done the response is supposed to be updated and added here right so uh, this logic would be driven by something here okay this something here is gonna be one of these things it can be controller it can be presenter it can be interactor it can be view model now there are different ways we can deal with uh, how these interactions happen so uh, there is one school of thought which says uh, two-way data flow one school of thought which says one-way data flow so somebody says ki achha chalo view hai uh, model hai to hum kya karenge ki isme ke beech mein hum aisa karenge ki view ke wajah se kuch bhi update hua so i will update the model accordingly then model uh, data will come and you know refresh the entire view so this is one way data flow okay there could be another way is that okay uh, we have got the model uh, right we have got the view so we keep this you know array of uh, entities here right so in a view if i update something the action will take place but the view will get immediately updated whenever the model gets updated it will replenish the data inside my uh, you know uh, the repository wherever my uh, tweets are stored or my local db wherever it is stored so step one this happens step two immediately the information is updated in the view step three the actual api call happens and when step three fulfills then step four this happens in this case it was like step one this then step two then step three now thing is that if this api call somehow fails because internet problem okay but here in the view the data has already been updated you can see that twitter actually uses this kind of a model how can you see that uh, go to your twitter app if you use twitter and go to anybody's tweet okay and then in the heart button double click it instead of clicking it once you will see that the count increases by 2 okay so that's not supposed to happen right why it increases by 2 is that every time you click on the heart button it immediately does plus 1 and it changes the color from blue to red okay it immediately does that and it does this part of the job later on in the background if this part of the job is fulfilled okay then it will update the number again properly later on so what you can do is you say some tweet has 10 likes you go and double click it it will become 12 you will see that immediately today right now you open your twitter app you can see it happen okay if uh, you know anybody uh, you can check it out and tell me on the chat do you see it happening or not okay now uh, what will happen if you just uh, it will go from 10 to 12 right you just scroll up the tweet and then scroll down come back to that same tweet you will see that now the state is liked it is blue to red it has happened because you have liked it already but the number would be back to 11 because by now twitter has actually synchronized the data with the backend and they know that the number is 11 it's not 12 anymore okay so this is two-way data flow they are doing they are immediately changing the data on the view but they are synchronizing it from the backend later on one way data flow is means that you know uh, some apps you will see uh, that if you try to make a post or something like that uh, so with facebook twitter what kind of these apps it happens if you even make a new tweet it will show it will appear as if the tweet has already been posted but in the background is still trying to post it even if you don't have internet you can still make a tweet later on when you have the internet the tweet will be posted okay uh, there are other apps like a banking transaction you would not want to do something like this you can't you know double minus the amount from somebody's bank account just because they have pressed on the pay now button twice okay so in those cases you want to make the api call the api call will succeed then only the fresh data that it comes you will update on the view that's one way data flow so in one way data flow there is more data integrity but the speed is slow this two way data flow data integrity is low sometimes you see wrong data on the screen compared to what actually in the db is there but the speed is faster okay so it depends on what kind of data flow you want you can create observables inside your view model or you can use a presenter pattern and you can do an interactor pattern inside that presenter so there are these uh, architectures that's why they are used okay now uh, so you know uh, tested on my tweet itself <laughs> okay so people have already tested and you can see it increasing by two right so uh, I'm not going to go deep into you know the architectures right now here i mean at coding blocks we have a course where we do it in depth uh, i can make a small series of videos on youtube as well on this because it will take more than 
फाइव मिनट्स टेन मिनट्स इन साइड दिस वन वीडियो इट विल टेक मोर टाइम दैन दैट टू एक्सप्लेन वट डिफरेंट आर्किटेक्चर्स आर यू कैन गो टू दू नो द माइंड डॉक्स पेज दट आई शोड एंड यू कैन लर्न अबाउट आर्किटेक्चर देर एज वेल बट दिस इज वट आर्किटेक्चर रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन आर गोन बी लाइक सो समबडी माइड आस्क यू वाई यूर यूजिंग एम बी वी एम एंड देन द एडवांटेजेस आर नॉट जस्ट वन वे डेटा फ्लो वर्सेज टू वे डेटा फ्लो हाउ यू टेस्ट द व्यू मॉडल और हाउ यू टेस्ट अ कंट्रोलर और हाउ यू टेस्ट अ प्रेजेंटर हाउ यू टेस्ट एन इंटरेक्टर दे आर ऑल वेरी डिफरेंट सो राइटिंग टेस्ट फॉर दैम आर ऑल्सो गोन बी वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट नाउ एज अ एस डी वन आई वुड जस्ट एक्सपेक्ट समबडी टू बी एबल टू नो द आर्किटेक्चर्स इफ दे हैव यूज वन पर्टिकुलर आर्किटेक्चर दे शुड नो द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ इट एज एन एस डी टू काइंड ऑफ पर्सन आई वुड वॉन्ट दैम टू बी एबल टू यू नो टेल मी प्रॉपर प्रोज एंड कॉन्स ऑफ द आर्किटेक्चर वर्सेज सम अदर आर्किटेक्चर वाई दे हैव नॉट यूज द अदर आर्किटेक्चर वाई दे हैव यूज द करंट आर्किटेक्चर एंड द आंसर शुड नॉट बी लाइक लॉट ऑफ पीपल आंसर आजकल ट्रेंड में एम वी वी एम क्यों यूज कर रहे हैं आजकल वही गूगल वाले बोल रहे हैं ट्रेंड करना चाहिए हमको दस द वर्स्ट आंसर यू नॉट गॉन गेट सिलेक्टेड इफ यू आंसर समथिंग लाइक दैट इफ यू डू एनी थिंग राइट इफ यू डू एनी थिंग बिकॉज इट्स इन ट्रेंड और अपने ब्लॉग पढ़ा अच्छा लगा है देखने में विदाउट एक्चुअली अपलाइंग रैशनल थाट बिहाइंड इट इट्स यू आर नॉट गॉन गेट सिलेक्टेड बाई गिविंग सच काइंड ऑफ एन आंसर सो यू शुड भी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन वाई अ पर्टिकुलर आर्किटेक्चर यू आर यूजिंग वट बेनिफिट डज दैट आर्किटेक्चर हैव एंड वाई नॉट सम अदर आर्किटेक्चर एंड इफ यू आर एट एस डी टू लेवल देन यू शुड भी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन वाई हाउ योर आर्किटेक्चर वट एवर यू आर यूजिंग आप एम वी बी यूज करो एम वी सी यूज करो एम वी बी एम यूज करो द पर्टिकुलर आर्किटेक्चर दैट यू हैव यूज उसको कैसे टेस्टिंग करते हैं ओके अत्री त्रिपाठी एज अ क्वेश्चन कैन अपलाइज एन एंड्रॉइड फ्रेशर फॉर जे डी विच वॉन्ट्स टू टू फोर ईयर्स एक्सपीरियंस बट आई डिड एंड्रॉइड विथ सेवल पर्स फॉर टू ईयर्स इन कॉलेज डू दोज ईयर्स काउंट वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन अत्री सो ये क्वेश्चन मेरे दिमाग में भी होता था वेन आई वॉज इन माई कॉलेज आई हैड वर्क विद सम बिग कंपनीज ऑलरेडी माइक्रोमैक्स के फोन्स का जो ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम है हैड वर्क ऑन दैट सोनी के फोन्स के ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम पे हैड वर्क नॉट जस्ट एप्स हैड एक्चुअली वर्क ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो आई यूज टू थिंक दैट वेदर आई कैन अप्लाई फॉर जॉब्स वेर दे आस्क फॉर यू नो ऑलरेडी सम नंबर ऑफ यूर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस सो आई अप्लाई टू सम स्टार्टअप सम रिमोट जॉब्स आई गॉट थ्रू अ फ्यू ऑफ देम एज वेल वेन आई वॉज इन माई कॉलेज सो इट येस टूडे द सिचुएशन इज इवन बेटर मैं अब बात कर रहा हूँ टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन के जमाने की बात कर रहा हूँ माई टाइम एन आई वज इन कॉलेज नाउ इट्स बीन फोर फाइव ईयर्स मोर सिचुएशन इज इवन बेटर पीपल आर नॉट गॉन बी लाइक यू नो देर आर वेरी रेयर कंपनीज विच हैव अ हार्ड बाउंड ऑन एक्चुअल ग्रेजुएशन ईयर कि अच्छा तुम्हारा ग्रेजुएशन ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी है तो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू से पहले हम टू प्लस ईयर्स एक्सपीरियंस मानेंगे नहीं ऐसे कंपनीज बहुत रेयर है those companies are trash don't apply to those companies fuck those companies okay the companies which think uh, in uh, these kind of terms who are doing mathematics like this fuck them don't go and work for them your life would be anyway be hell okay uh, most other companies uh, if you are able to actually show experience of really working on production grade projects okay this is very important just by saying 2 to 4 years i have worked does not mean you know, side projects you have made or hackathons you have gone actually internship you have done in some startup which has production level app on the play store already that kind of experience if you have 2 years you can apply to a job which has 2 to 4 years experience written inside the jd that you can definitely do there's not going to be any problem related to that okay uh okay cool uh so anything else oh let me come back to other questions um what other questions do we have okay um will activity life cycle stuff be replaced with jetpack compose no jetpack compose does not uh, remove activity life cycle jetpack compose removes the way views are created but does not remove the way fragments and activities are created so activity life cycle will still be important even if you work with jetpack compose okay uh uh flutter or react native somebody is asking uh so uh flutter or react native uh if you know react already uh, so this is not related to the kind of video i am making right now ye native android ke interview questions ke liye tha but still somebody is asking that i'd like to quickly answer that question uh flutter or react native is a very simple answer agar aap abhi start kar rahe ho flutter se start karo uh it is a better framework than react native uh and performance better aati hai thodi bahut react native se uh, code better likha jata hai and ui better banta hai is my opinion 
करने में आपको दोनों में से अगर कोई रिएक्टेंट ज़्यादा आसान लग गया तो भाई दे वो कर लो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है बिकॉज इन इंडस्ट्री बोथ आर गेटिंग यूज अगर आपको रिएक्ट ऑलरेडी आता है वेब डेवलपमेंट आप करते हो एंड यू नो यू वांट टू क्विकली लर्न हाउ टू बिल्ड एन ऐप देन रिएक्ट नेटिव कुड बी अ बेटर चॉइस इन दैट केस बट अगर आपको नहीं आता कुछ भी एंड यू वांट टू स्टार्ट देन आई वुड से फ्लटर इज अ बेटर ऑप्शन ओके दैट्स माय ओपिनियन आई एम नॉट वेरी एक्सपीरियंसड इन इधर रिएक्ट नेटिव और फ्लटर फ्लटर आई मेड सम एप्स रिएक्ट नेटिव आई हैव जस्ट ट्राइड इट आउट वंस नॉट वेरी एक्सपीरियंस सो take my advice with a pinch of salt uh, ask somebody who is an expert in one of these two things okay so aajkal duniya mein expert bahut hai jo jo cheez nahi kare uske bare mein batate hain i prefer not to do that i prefer to talk about things only that i know about right so uh, then obviously yeah uh, coming to what other kind of questions that get asked so concurrency is something that is a very important topic that uh, you know questions get asked about uh, concurrency okay सो एक्टिविटी लाइफ साइकिल हो गया आर्किटेक्चर हो गया इफ यू आर एट एन एच डी टू लेवल देन डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन के ऊपर क्वेश्चन आएंगे लाइक वाई डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन इज सपोज टू बी यूज वट इज द पर्पज ऑफ इट यू माइट हैव यूज कॉइन इन योर प्रोजेक्ट दे माइट आस्क वाई कॉइन एंड वाई नॉट डैगर यू यू माइट हैव डैगर इन योर प्रोजेक्ट दे माइट आई एस्क यूज वाई डैगर वाई नॉट समथिंग एल्स दीज डेज देर इज हिल्ट Hill to use with Dagger to write uh, write even less code. Okay, so Dagger is a bigger topic to learn. Uh, I don't want to delve into that right now in this video because uh, DI को पांच मिनट में समझाने में बहुत ऊपर ऊपर से होता है जिसका कोई point नहीं होता है, uh, right? But DI का बहुत uh, simple सा जो uh, purpose है वो मैं एक बार दिखा देता हूँ uh, in in the project that I had made, uh, you know. So what what does DI really do is uh, the code to initialize classes is separated from where it is getting used so that is what di essentially is let me uh, bring that my screen up to ye jo i think imgur wala tha i think uh, where let so yaar you would see something like this i have written inject imgur api तो यार ये जो इंजेक्ट इमगुर एपीआई वाली चीज़ करी है सो आई नीड दिस इमगुर एपीआई ऑब्जेक्ट ओके एंड आई वाई डू आई नीड दैट ऑब्जेक्ट अभी नीचे जाके पता चल जाएगा सो वाई डू आई नीड द इमगुर एपीआई क्लास बिकॉज अच्छा यहाँ पे शायद मैंने यूज नहीं किया है समवेर एल्स आई मैट यूज लेट सी देख व्यू मॉडल में डालने के लिए शायद यूज किया था और मे बी दिस कोड इज नॉट येट अपडेटेड प्रोबेबली आई हैव यूज दैट टू पुट इट इनसाइड द व्यू मॉडल रिपोजिटरी आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ देर इज Oh yeah, so actually DI नहीं यूज किया आई हैव डन इम गो डॉट ए पी आई लाइक दिस डायरेक्टली एक्चुअली दर डी आई वन आई हैड नॉट कम्प्लीटेड राइटिंग दैट कोड एक्चुअली सो इफ आई नीडेड दैट इम गो ए पी आई इन मल्टीपल प्लेसेज सो हियर मैंने क्या किया आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ स्टार्टिक ऑब्जेक्ट विच इज नॉट अ गुड थिंग बिकॉज आई हैव डन इम गो डॉट ए पी आई दिस इज अ स्टार्टिक ऑब्जेक्ट दैट एक्जिस्ट इन साइड दिस प्लेस इन माई क्लास हियर सो आई हैव क्रिएटेड दिस ए पी आई ऑब्जेक्ट इन वन प्लेस एंड आई एम यूजिंग इट Uh, thing is that this is a static object that is globally available across the app. But if I needed separate instances of it at different different places, then I would have to write this part of the code. Retrofit is created using this, and then uh, the client is created using this. So this entire code I have written it one place and made it static and global across the app, which is not a good pattern for a bigger app. It's better that uh, this code gets run at the runtime. so dependency injection what it does is that you create a function which tells how to generate the api okay and then wherever you need the api you essentially write uh, this kind of a code you write uh, inject imgur api the api is uh, generated here automatically how this actually happens is when your code is getting built uh, uh, there is transformations that happen during the compile time so extra classes are created for you during compile time you don't write those classes they are created by dagger 
so dagger will create some extra classes and functions that will make sure that this api object is uh, initialized inside activity okay so again dependency injection you should study about it properly it is a big topic it takes weeks and months to uh, learn it first time when you're learning it it's not something easy to go so i don't want to you know just give you an overview upar upar se here it will give you a fake kind of knowledge it's better if you understand it properly rather than like this uh, but yeah so di based questions would be there is you know uh, uh, there is something called scope as well so a uh, scope tells uh, at what level the item is supposed to be injected can it be injected at an activity level can it be injected as a single object across the entire app whether it be a global singleton whether uh, you know at every activity i need a separate copy of it so these kind of things are set using scopes so understanding scopes inside di understanding modules and components modules or components are used to you know uh, create the basically dependency graph so to uh want object a i might need object b because object a, b is part of object a so where will i get object b from so that is created using modules and components so understanding that is important and uh, at sd2 level it's uh, dagger is actually kind of important uh, to know because uh, most companies at a bigger scale apps they're working on they would be using dagger in their projects so uh, dagger is dagger gets kind of uh, you know important in in those cases okay um okay coming back to what other topic uh, you know mm. so then there is concurrency okay so what does concurrency mean uh, multi threading basically now concurrency uh, is a big topic and there's going to be a lot of questions about it so it's going to be about you know how to do some task in the background thread how to make sure that your ui thread is not blocked how to make sure that when you're doing concurrency then memory leak does not happen how to make sure that race conditions don't happen how to make sure that uh, if your code is getting run in parallel it does not interfere with the code that is running inside your ui these kind of things uh, start happening uh, i can give you a short example uh, about it by the way is uh, you know uh, let me come to the screen let me look at the code here right yeah. so uh, this is some existing uh, code right if i tell somebody ki acha uh, if i uh, want to make like this that you know there is my activity 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 where is it uh, right so let's say i want to create a button clicking on that button after 10 seconds i want to show something on my screen or to change the background color of the screen or something like that okay so let's just say uh, we have this activity main right uh, we have the background of the app this is the drawer layout this is the background of the app or something like that so let's just say that you know uh, we we have uh, let's say some article fragment is there okay let's say we are going to create here okay uh or inside main activity itself let's just say uh, so uh, we have let's say a button let me create inside this thing So let's just say I've created a button which is big in size or something like that. We'll figure that those things out. But what happens is in that case I can have this uh, you know um, now on clicking this button I want after ten seconds the background of the activity to change. Okay. So after ten seconds, I want this thing to happen. Uh, this drawer layout is there, right? So let uh, I want that you know uh, binding dot uh, drawer layout dot uh, set background color uh, color dot red. Okay, but I want this to happen after ten seconds. Okay, if I ask that, generally most of the people would uh, write this code. They would make you know uh, they would create a handler and then they will do dot uh, post delayed. right uh, and inside post delayed uh, 
after 10 seconds they will write this okay now what uh, can go wrong in this kind of a code uh, these kind of things uh, do get asked so first of all if after so this will wait for 10 seconds before running it and after 10 seconds okay so uh, somebody can write like this that's fine so after 10 seconds if when this code is getting executed what happens if i people will ask them further questions like i click on that button but before 10 seconds is complete i close the app what will happen okay you can close apps also in multiple ways but what will happen if i click on this button and after 10 seconds i go to a different activity what happens if i click on this button and before 10 seconds i swipe away the app from my recent screen okay then what will happen okay uh, will this cause a memory leak right so these kind of questions can be uh, there if somebody says okay don't do it using a handler do it using a new thread so uh, you know uh, uh, run the delay or something like that let's say there is some function which takes 10 seconds to operate okay so i do that using a separate thread so i do you know uh, like this uh, val t equal to uh, create a new thread okay then i do dot t dot uh, run and inside this run i call some you know uh, some function that takes a lot of time and after that if i have to do this change here right now this will fail because uh, changing the background color does not work inside the ui uh, not uh, on a thread which is separate from the ui thread now this is a different thread so inside this thread if i'm trying to run this uh, then uh, you know uh, the changing of the background color will not work so i'll have to put it inside something like you know run on ui thread so it'll be a function called around ui thread and this has to be done inside it here again here the question will come is that you know uh, before this function call has ended before this thread has started ended my activity has been shut down so in that case run on ui thread will fail actually you will find a null pointer inside there as well or concurrency errors can happen there so people will you know make complex situations like this they will give you a thread they will give you a handler they will put the you know uh, ui changing code on a different thread tell you to come back to this main thread and do it and then ask you whether there is a memory leak here or not so that's how concurrent questions are asked and again this is something that you will have to spend time on uh, yourself manually uh, to try out these things and tinker with them try to run like you know uh, let's say there is an app where you are trying to find out the first 1000 prime numbers so that is an operation that takes time right so first 1000 prime numbers if you have to find out probably less time so first 10000 prime numbers so first 10000 prime numbers if you have to do it will actually take a significant amount of time on a phone right it will take that amount of time so you do it in a background thread now after doing it on a background thread you print all these numbers on your screen okay just try and make this app and you will understand how to work on concurrency better so take an input from the user n and then for print the first n prime numbers very simple app so the operation of doing those n prime numbers you should do it in a background thread okay uh, you should print out the final result and all you should print out back in the ui thread okay now between these two operations if the app has gotten closed how to handle that so those kind of things uh, they will come into the picture in the uh, concurrency side of uh, things cool um Uh, so Atri has another question. I will take that up. So will knowing the newer Dagger Hilt in place of Dagger Android and Flow State as a replacement for RX Java be acceptable in my interviews? Uh, it's a good question. I would like to answer it by saying one thing. Uh, things that have been introduced into the Android world in the last one year, at any point of time, I'm not saying specifically 2020 wala year. I'm saying if we are talking about 2018, then things that were introduced in 2017. If we are talking in 2019, then things that were introduced in 2018, right? So things that have been introduced to the Android world in just the one year previous last year, those things, if you don't know, but whatever problems they are supposed to solve, for example, Hilt is new, but before Hilt, Dagger Android was there. Before that, plain Dagger 2 people were using, right? So when I make projects, I don't use Dagger Android, I use plain Dagger. These days I use Hilt in, in projects. Uh, at Target also, we are using Hilt in our project, okay? Uh, at Zomato, Dagger was not used. There was no dependency injection getting used. It was a very big app, but dependency injection is not used. It's not necessary that everywhere dependency injection is getting used. Okay. So in an interview, you are not going to be judged in a bad way or a good way, either way, for knowing the new things or for not knowing the new things. As long as you understand what problem that thing solves and you understand how that problem can be solved using something else as well. So that is fine. Okay. 
डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन किसी को नहीं आता है दो स्टैंड पीपल कैन ऑफ एन यूज सर्विस लोकेटर पैटर्न दे माइट हैव फंक्शन विच इज लाइक यू नो क्रिएट ए पी आई फंक्शन रिटर्न समवेयर इन साइड देर एप दे कॉल क्रिएट ए पी आई एपीड क्रिएट इट्स कॉल सर्विस लोकेटर पैटर्न सर्विस लोकेटर पैटर्न के ऊपर ही डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन बनाओ डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन मेक्स इट ईजियर टू डू दी सर्विस लोकेटर पैटर्न राइट सो दो थिंग्स आर फाइन सिमिलरली लाइक इफ यू आर यूजिंग स्टेट फ्लो इंस्टेड ऑफ लाइव डेटा इफ यूर यूजिंग इट बाई द वे latest stuff you are using it i will definitely ask why have you used state flow why have you not used live data and what benefit have you got in it and you should be able to give me a convincing answer more than ye naya cheez tha shiny new thing so mere ko mann kiya maine use kar liya right that is a very bad answer if somebody gives such answers i generally do not you know take them to the next round uh, they should be able to tell me okay i was trying it out because i saw that with live data you know memory leaks can happen view model uh, tying it to the view model is important state flow i can use with mvp as well with mvvm as well so i use that good explanation if you can give that's fine okay that's the important part uh cool um so 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 uh, rx java versus coroutine somebody is asking again if you are starting today if you are using kotlin already then use coroutines rx java is thing of the past today some of the biggest apps in the world they are already using rx java by saying thing of the past it does not mean ki ab use nahi hota it just means that new projects don't use it anymore at target we use rx java in their entire app but we are changing to coroutines we are we are going to be wiping away complete rx java from the project and i think this year it will take us the whole year because सिर्फ यही काम तो नहीं करेंगे और भी काम कर रहे होंगे ठीक है तो वी विल रिमूव आर एक जब स्लोली स्लोली अक्रॉस दी एंटायर एप एंड टर्न इन टू को रूटीन्स वेन आई वज एट जोमैटो दैट वज वन ईयर बैक आई वज लिविंग सो ऑलरेडी को रूटीन्स वज स्टार्टिंग टू गेटिंग यूज इन सम प्लेस इन साइड एप सो आर एक जब वज नॉट यूज एट जोमैटो यू नो थ्रेड्स एंड देवर मैनुअल एग्जीक्यूटर्स एंड यू नो थ्रेड पुल एग्जीक्यूटर्स एंड डिस्पैच वर यूज आर एक जावा एज अ फ्रेम वर्क वॉज नॉट इवन यूज देयर सो एट जोमैटो पीपल मूव डायरेक्टली टू को रूटीन इट सेल्फ आर एक जावा वॉज नेवर देयर सो या इफ यू आर ऑलरेडी यूजिंग आर एक जावा यू शुड स्टार्ट सींग हाउ को रूटीन प्लस फ्लो कैन वर्क को रूटीन प्लस फ्लो टूगेदर गिव यू अ रिप्लेसमेंट फॉर आर एक्स जावा ओके बट इफ यू डोट नॉट फोकस ऑन को रूटीन राइट नाउ इफ यू ऑलरेडी नो आर एक्स जावा यू कैन गिव एंड नॉट इंटरव्यूज विदाउट नोइंग को रूटीन वेरी वेल दैट इज फाइन देर इज नॉट वी एनी इशू ऑन दैट ओके so not having prior intern experience in android what type of projects i uh, have to make to work with a startup uh, i i would heavily suggest heavily suggest okay very big way i would suggest ki yaar uh, at least kisi chote mote jagah pe internship experience aap karo okay otherwise yes you can make personal projects as well so uh, if you have done an internship at a company where the app is at least out on the play store chahe सौ लोग यूज करते हैं बट इट इज आउट ऑन द प्ले स्टोर दैट इज अ वेरी बिग पॉइंट इफ नॉट देन मेक अ पर्सनल प्रोजेक्ट एंड टू एंड आइडिया सोच के बना के कंप्लीट करके ऐप को पुट इट अप ऑन द प्ले स्टोर स्पेंड दैट फिफ्टीन डॉलर दैट यू हैव टू स्पेंड स्टूडेंट कुछ डिस्काउंट भी आता है फॉर मेकिंग एन अकाउंट दिस डेज एंड पुट दैट ऐप ऑन द प्ले स्टोर सो द नॉलेज दैट यू कैन मेक एन एंड्रॉयड ऐप एंड टू एंड नॉट जस्ट मतलब यू नो राइट द कोड फॉर एन एंड्रॉयड ऐप लुकिंग एट अ ट्यूटोरियल मेरा कोर्स भी है कोडिंग लॉस पे आप जाके देखो पहले दस वीडियो देखो आपसे एंड्रॉइड ऐप बनना तो स्टार्ट हो जाएगा बट यू डोंट हैव ओनली दैट नॉलेज यू कैन एक्चुअली मेक द ऐप पब्लिश इट डिप्लॉय इट टू द प्ले स्टोर ये नॉलेज है शोइंग दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो आई वुड हैवली सजेस्ट एन इंटर्नशिप इफ पॉसिबल टू थ्री मंथ्स डू समवेयर ऑन एंड्रॉयड प्रोजेक्ट इवन इफ इट इज नॉट वेरी हाईली पेइंग ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट इज नॉट एक्साइटिंग बट यू विल गेट एन आइडिया हाउ टू वर्क ऑन प्रोडक्शन प्रोजेक्ट इफ नॉट देन डेफिनेटली मेक वन प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ योर सेल्फ एंड पुलट ऑन द प्ले स्टोर ओके दैट इज गॉन बी अ वेरी बिग डील ओके स्कोप ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट अगेन द लाइक द वंस आई शोड गिट हब के ट्रेंडिंग रिपोजिटरीज की लिस्टिंग दिखाना या मीडियम का क्लोन बनाना दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दोज आर परफेक्टली फाइन राइट टू टू क्रिएट अ स्मॉल प्रोजेक्ट उसके स्कोप के लिए दैट इज गॉन बी फाइन ओके सो इफ यू आर स्टार्टिंग एंड्रॉयड नाउ विच आर्किटेक्चर शुड यू स्टार्ट विथ सो इट इज अ सब्जेक्टिव थिंग आई वुड से एम वी पी एम वी आई और एम वी वी एम तीनों बहुत अच्छे आर्किटेक्चर्स है आई वुड सजेस्ट यू स्टार्ट विद एम वी वी एम बिकॉज लर्निंग मटीरियल सबसे ज्यादा अवेलेबल है बिकॉज गूगल इज पुशिंग फॉर एम वी वी एम 
and as a result more learning material on mvvm is available so start with mvvm as an architecture when you are starting and development today okay um so that would be about the architecture question um so it has been a while as well i think 1 hour 15 minutes ho gaye hain uh, i would end this video as well because you know uh, uh, long sessions when we are live is great but then later on when somebody sees the video then it is too long uh, i would end saying that uh, if anybody wants to uh, in the comments write down the time stamps uh, you know uh, i would be very very thankful uh, next video i would give you a shout out if anybody wants to write down the time stamps and then i would not have to go and manually find out my own time stamps if somebody can do that please do that write down in the comments i will add it in the video description because 1 uh, hour 15 minutes having time stamps is going to be very uh, useful uh, so if somebody can uh, somebody has watched the entire video and if they are uh, seeing this part of the video then uh, please help me with that you can do that um so so uh, other questions uh, you know guys uh, so do, do two things one uh, please join uh, cb.lk/discord okay so we have a discord channel on cb.lk/discord there is a uh, android uh, there is a uh, android channel inside that feel free to ask any questions there Uh, you can write down questions uh, in comments under this video as well i would uh, be happy to answer to all those questions we can do another part 2 of this same session android interview questions i think lot of topics are still left i know uh, but i don't want to make this one video too long uh, i i can make another one sd two wale questions or depth mein or we can do some mock interviews and one more thing if anybody is interested uh, let me know uh, on discord you can tell me If anybody is interested to do a mock interview of Android, and if you are okay with your interview being uh, put up on YouTube, uh, you know, uh, so I don't know when I asked about the resume roast, I did not think a lot of people would want to submit their resumes to get roasted, but a lot of people did. More than thousand people did. मैंने तो बस तीन बारी resume roast के episodes ही बनाए. I will probably make more. Uh, but if anybody is interested to you know sit for a mock Android interview with me and. Uh, if you are okay with that interview being put up on uh, youtube uh, you know so ping me let me know uh, we can do a mock android interview i will give you a take home assignment give you uh, you know th two three days time you come with that uh, project uh, and submit that and we will sit that round one like i was saying you know uh, round one is we'll discuss the project with you so we'll do that round one interview uh, anybody who is interested in doing that uh, on the discord channel on the android group uh, android channel let me know in the discord server that you want to do a mock interview with me uh, right uh, so we can actually set that up that would be pretty interesting uh, cool uh for full stack dev live interview question uh, interview questions uh, rohit uh, we have another session like today's one day after tomorrow right uh, so on uh, saturday this is saturday right so saturday uh, uh, no not saturday it will be uh, like uh, wednesday tha actually it has become saturday now so friday night basically so friday night uh, there is uh, another uh, you know uh, session uh, that will be on node js similar things i will be covering uh, interview questions that i ask node js people again sd1 ke level pe kya puchta hu sd2 ke level pe kya puchta hu javascript ke bare mein kya questions puche jate hain and all of that stuff so we are going to be doing that uh, on friday night and like i said if anybody is interested for mock interviews uh, let me know uh, eh, kafi raat bhi ho gayi hai and uh, मुझे तो सोना नहीं मुझे एक्चुअली और काम है सो आई गो एंड डू दैट यू गाइस गो एंड यू नो इफ दोज हु आर गोन स्लीप गो स्लीप अदरवाइज गो एंड यू नो स्टडी एंड नॉट रिलेटेड स्टफ इफ एनीथिंग एल्स यू वांट टू लर्न फील फ्री टू पिंग अस ऑन द डिस्कॉर्ड चैनल एनी क्वेश्चन दैट यू हैव मी पुलकित भैया पुलकित भैया जो कि ओपिया के प्रोजेक्ट मेंटेनर हो गए हैं अभी राइट uh, right? सो द वे गूगल गूगल का खुद का ओपन सोर्स प्रोजेक्ट है जी सॉक में आता है तो पुलकित भैया हैज आंसर्ड सम क्वेश्चन द चैट टुडे एज वेल सो मी पुलकित भैया वी आर ऑलवेज अवेलेबल ऑन द डिस्कॉर्ड चैनल वी वुड बी हैप्पी टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन राइट सो थैंक यू फॉर टर्निंग अप होप दिस हेल्प्ड एनी अदर क्वेश्चन फील फ्री टू आस्क अस मीट यू अगेन डे आफ्टर टुमारो नाइट ओके हैव अ नाइस डे series for di we can do that definitely we can do a series for di uh, that that's a that's a, a good uh, you know suggestion 
So Discord link, I'll just put it once again. It's uh, cb.lk slash uh, Discord. Uh, I'm just putting it down in the chat, okay? Uh, Discord link I have put in the chat once again. You can just go uh, through that, cool. Okay guys, good night, uh, have a nice day, uh, meet you again.